All right, serious question, even though you probably know the answer. Is there any such thing as actually having clean code? I don't have a lot of experience in doing a lot of back end or big database type things, but I can tell you right now, I just don't think clean code exists. And the reason why is because I always come across articles like this. Am I looking at it right? No, articles like this. <laughs> And it just kind of proves the whole thing about the whole concept of clean code. So in general, this is blog post on Hacker News and the person titles it, uh, where do I find good code to read? He's looking for good code to read. And then the conversation determined, like it just basically turns into, well, what do you mean by good code necessarily? Starting off from down here, he says, I feel like I get a lot more out of messing with slash hacking on a code than I do from reading it. I'm pretty sure that it will vary amongst people, but I've got loads more out of open source contributions to sometimes small projects and not very much out of trying to do something like read the code from Glasgow, Haskell or compiler or something. So for code to read, I think having an in is crucial, at least for me. So I'd say find a cool, maybe small open source project, look at the issue tracker if it has one and try to implement something. You'll only really know if it's good code or why after you start trying to change it. And then it goes on to someone else saying, I think the difficulty with this advice is that it's hard to know where the Venn diagram overlaps between having an N and good code. A lot of the code I read because I have an N is simply because I think not very good in the sense of being enlightening in the furtherance of my craft. It usually just looks like code I'd already write before. That's interesting. I typically find the recommendations people make, like here's an example of a particularly good code for this particular language slash style architecture seems to be more enlightening. All right. Someone continues to say, I like this and it is true. In terms of this guy's uh, response, I like this and it's true. In addition, I have found that good code always tends to survive refractors despite having the quality of being easy to change. The Ask HN post specifically mentioned good code, but what follows are some of my subjective thoughts about the benefits of reading bad code. Oh, wow. All right. Bad code has half haphazard, a varied, sorry, haphazard and varied, and good code is a samey. You are a pattern matcher. And thank you, cell phone, for telling me that one of my friends really, really likes to be my friend. My gosh. Anyway. Uh, if you read a lot of bad code beforehand, being able to read and understand bad code is a far more lucrative skill to have in the workplace than being able to quickly understand good code. In a big team, you will spend a lot of, mostly if you're a senior, you'll spend a lot of time reading other people's code. Best to get good at it. Okay. I have yet to be presented with a steaming mess of code to read and explain to an interviewer, yet it is the very first thing most new joiners face at a seniority level. All right. All right. And see, this is what I mean. Every time there's a concept of like uh good code versus bad code, there's always this thing about like whether, I mean, if you have good code, that doesn't mean that it runs amazing all the time, right? Like even if you've done your best to do like your big O notation and have like a O of N runtime or O of one runtime, you could still have bad code. And that's what I'm saying. Like is bad code code that you can't read or is bad code code that runs very slow but in the same sense you could have some good code but unfortunately it runs slow and it's like like i said i don't have a big amount of experience with other companies databases and back and stuff like that but in every time the concept comes up about good code this is usually the gray area about what it means to actually have good code or clean code right? Uh, someone continues to say, I think it depends on the person. I will regularly read source code for projects I find interesting to figure out how they work. And I do agree with that because that's the same thing as people saying that leak code doesn't help you. Leak code for me helps. The same way looking at something that I haven't approached before or a data structure being done in a way that I haven't done before in general, for me, it helps. I'm not going to obviously get it on day one or so like that, but for me, it helps when like later on down the line, I'm like, ah, so that was that thing that I was le learning about that I didn't really understand, even though I still won't probably use it yet. But regardless, 
It really depends on the level that you're at in your own coding ability. When I was a younger programmer, I had the fortune to have a CS professor who believed in reading good code and encouraged us to do so. Nowadays, if you want to learn something, I'll find the right code to read. Someone has, sorry, someone who has done the something similar to what I'm trying to do. But when I was a younger programmer, I still tried to find and understand more basic concepts. I just wanted to read good code. I wanted to know how structure, how to structure programming logic. Now I don't want to, wow, I don't know why this person's dialogue does not fit with mine. Now I don't want to know how to structure logic unless I'm really interested in learning some newfangled concept. Typically something having to do with the concurrency since there has always been there always seems to be new ways to express concurrency in programming. Most of the code I look to read these days is because I want to start using a new library and I want to see how someone else has done it. That is very much true. I mean, most of the time when I'm looking at someone else's code, it's because I'm trying to understand something new, essentially. Or maybe they, again, they approach a task that I usually do in a totally different way. Uh, let's see, let's see, uh, and see here. Most code is not worth reading. Even well-structured code bases are mostly composed of code which is not worth reading. The difference in a well-structured code base is that some of the code prevents you from having to read huge amounts of other code. All code is bad. It starts out bad just by existing. It's only redeeming quality is preventing you from having to deal with more bad code. Everyone thinks they write good, clean code, and it's never really true. I'm, I like, I, this is why I like this conversation. And it's never really true. Good programmers are good because of the architecture of their code, not because a single excerpt of code in isolation looks a certain way. What you really want to read about are good code designs. Read APIs, models, concepts, schemas, etc. Another comment mentioned the Go standard library, and I totally agree. But stop at the APIs. If you look inside, you'll see that it's mostly just garbage. It's good because the APIs are good and you don't have to read the rest. I'm not sure if I understand what that meant fully. It's good because the APIs are good and you don't have to read the rest. Hmm. I haven't messed with the Go language necessarily. And someone here, I don't know. I don't know. I argue APIs and models are code in the informal sense. Architecture is important, but it's even harder to understand good architecture than code. Not without architect right there explaining it to you. Many decisions were made for some reason that you can only understand through experience. That's right. There's definitely a code component to them, but most of reading about and understanding them would come from reading and sorry, reading the surrounding documentation or reasoning. Most of the text would be prose rather than a language consumed by any computer system. I'm not sure what you mean by understand good architecture. One thing that makes an architecture good is simplicity and not clarity. Mm, we are really splitting hairs in this conversation. If it's hard to understand, it can't be that good. I can say for certain, if you understand the problem being solved, but not the architecture, then it is for sure a bad. If you understand the problem being solved, but not the architecture, then it's a bad architecture. What if you're just not skilled at understanding the architecture, though? Like everything in here is just such... Like, I swear, when we program, we think in terms of like zeros and ones, but I don't like to think, when it comes to life in general, I don't like to think of things as just black or white. They're, everything usually has a gray area. Like, there's a really muddle, muddy area and right in between when it comes to most of the things that we talk about in life, whether it's politics or my opinions on what makes a game good or anything like that, or whether JavaScript, like, it's always a gray area. All right, so we're not going to read this entire thing, but... Lastly, do, 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 do. Huh, should I go through this junk here? Give up on good code. It persuades its pursuit is how junior devs pester senior devs based on a delusion that such thing is possible. Good code is working code. Good code that pays the bills. Focus instead on writing code you can throw away easily. Code that you are wholly unattached to and is isolated enough that rewriting it won't cost absurd hours. See, the thing is, I somewhat disagree to a certain, he said, it's a pursuit how juniors, no, 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 no. Good code is working code. No. 
code that pays bills. No. In my opinion, good code is code that you don't have to... Good code to me is code that can scale later on in the future. If I leave a project or if someone else comes into the project and they can look at it and understand it and that code itself can scale and be more maintainable in the future. Yeah. See this and this guy already says it highly maintainable. All right. All right. The problem with believing that good code is good enough to deliver business value is short sighted. Good code is highly maintainable so that you can continue to meet business objectives in a timely manner without regressions. Often this means ironically taking a little bit of extra time early on to think about how to make your code readable and simple enough for someone else to be jumping in maintain. Okay. That is exactly what I literally just said. And that's what I mean. Like sometimes it's like, if you're good enough to understand the code base, then that doesn't mean the code base has bad code or necessarily good code. You know what I mean? Like if you can understand something, I think the concept of being a good coder or a big or good programmer is what we need to really discuss. Like good code, like that other guy said, code kind of starts off bad in general. The majority of code kind of starts off bad in general, especially if you haven't taken the time to really think about early on, like you said, to make your code readable and how it's going to scale later on. Like good code can be done with a good coder slash programmer. And that is just my hard opinion. Like I said, it's so much of a gray area that you can't really determine what is necessary. It's like saying, what's the best workout to get abs? I mean, I mean, I don't necessarily know. Oh, what's the best workout to really get your entire body completely as fit as it needs to be to be able to do certain things in life? There's various ways. And also, depending on your body type, there are certain things you can't do. Some people can't necessarily do certain exercises because of their actual physical condition. Some people actually have blood that pumps harder through their body, so they get winded way easy. Like, it's their blood pressure is just different and stuff like that. So typically, like I said, when it comes to life, good code is just such a gray area, dude, that I don't really understand why we have, I understand why we have debates. I don't understand why we have a debate of what is so-called good code. Because I'm telling you now, if you take, if I can read through some code and kind of get the gist of what it is, I'm not necessarily worried about, depending on the project, I'm not worried about what its runtime is or how fast it is, unless that project is something that needs to be like life-saving, like government websites and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Or also in terms of uh, gaming, you need to have quality optimizable code so that it can again scale later on, but it also doesn't cause some problems in the future. Like it's that simple to me yo when you're starting out you don't know the difference between good code or bad and even at a senior level from what i understand based off my reading you still probably don't even know good code from bad you're just writing code and if you come into someone else's project later on and you can understand it maybe you can optimize it to be a little better but at the end of the day you need code that gets the job done but can also just be readily available for the next step in that project's life cycle you know?